Okay. Okay, I think I'm live now. <laughs> uh, I'm not using StreamYard today. Um, so uh, I have to get used to using the YouTube interface uh, for this one time, which I could have done this through StreamYard. It would have been okay. But honestly, I like the chat interface on YouTube better. And if you can hear me, please say something. If you can't, also, please say something. I always test my mic before, and I have the um, the input thing set to the like max that it will go, but I'm always worried that it won't work. I actually, <laughs> by the way, hi. Um, I actually had an issue with setting up the stream for some reason, even though my mic was plugged in and turned on, Chrome was like, what mic? I don't see a mic. There's no mic except for your internal one. And it's like, no, that's not the case. Hi, Gabby. Um, so for anybody watching who can, hi, Tony. For anybody watching who can see behind me, you will notice there is nothing on my wall anymore. Nothing except for that mirrored thing that's like right above my bed. I don't know how to describe it. It's like a a square mirror and it has like texture to it. I, I think it's cool, but uh, I spent the day packing. And by the day, I mean a few hours this afternoon packing. So my room looks like somebody doesn't really live here, which is really bizarre to think about honestly um so that's fun and and that's also why there's nothing on the wall behind me anymore which is really sad so i you know i've been thinking a lot about this move and i am not thrilled but at the same time like i think it will be a good experience I'm assuming that you guys can hear me because nobody has said that you can't. So we're just going to go with that. Um, so uh, it's been, it's just so weird. Cause like, okay, I, I'm going to take a moment here to be like personal with whoever's watching this. Uh, I've lived in this house my entire life. <laughs> so um, it's just a little weird to think that like I'm moving. Uh, and by I, I mean, I am moving with my parents because I currently cannot afford to move out on my own. Uh, when are you moving? Okay, thank God you can hear me. That is a good question. Probably soon. Um, I think that the plan, the plan temporarily tentatively the like the plan is to put the house um on the market in like a week or two like from today which is the 27th uh and go from there the thing is and now listen i don't know jack about buying a house or selling a house or anything uh the thing is is that apparently it is a seller's market currently there are, like, no houses for sale in this area that I live in. Or, like, there's, like, two, maybe, possibly. I don't know. But, um, hello, Tony. I, you know, this is confusing. There's two Tonys in chat. Um, so it's a seller's market, evidently, which means that the market is not oversaturated with homes being sold. So, like they're hoping that the house will be sold fairly quickly, which, I mean, I'm sure it will probably. The 10th. Yeah, no, I think their plan is to get the mar the house on the market sooner than the 10th. Um, I I'm not going to, like, I don't want to dox myself, <laughs> but uh, basically the house is going to be going on the market sometime in, like, the beginning of September, uh, so soon. Um, and it's just been a time... Because, you know, we have to, it, it's bizarre because, like, obviously we have to pack everything and we have to stage the house to make it look like people live here, but, like, not really. It's a weird concept. Where are you moving to? I, so I currently live in Massachusetts. I am moving to Virginia. And when I say Virginia, I mean Southern Virginia. Because, like, my, uh, my mother has family down there who live in Virginia Beach. And I know that, like, 
this is not giving anything away. I've talked about this before. Virginia Beach is a gigantic city, blah, 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 blah. Um, so we're moving down there. I'm hoping that um, it will open up more job opportunities for me because that area is a high turnover rate for a lot of things, homes, jobs, uh, various other things like that because of the military population. People are constantly moving in and out. There are things that go up, I guess. I don't I don't know. But uh, for now, you know, I've just been here doing the YouTube thing. And honestly, like the pandemic has been making it really difficult to find work. I know I've talked about this in previous videos, uh, but like it is. Uh, it's a pain in the ass. And <laughs> I really wish that it was easier. Uh, I'm good, Gabby. How are you? Uh, you know, it's let me take this off. I'm wearing like a cardigan over a short sleeve shirt because I was cold earlier. It's been in like the 60s today, which is really weird for the end of August because it's usually in like the 80s. And tomorrow it's going to be in the 80s. So it's so it's been really weird. I'm just sitting here. I have slippers on like I don't even know what my life has become. I'm packing things. I'm sitting here. I'm wearing slippers. Uh, will you still be doing YouTube when you move? Yes, I will. Definitely 100%. I have to let my dog out of the room. Otherwise, she's going to go berserk one moment. Okay, so, uh, oh, how are you feeling about moving and all that? <laughs> uh, not too thrilled. Um, if you guys can hear Fawn barking, I mean, I'm sorry, but like she's a dog. So, <laughs> uh, I, I'm not too thrilled about it. Um, I would rather, um, I would rather be moving to somewhere else in Massachusetts. I would not rather be like moving with my parents to Virginia, but unfortunately that is the reality they live in and it, it is what it is. Um, and we're doing it. Ah, uh, two weeks is the 10th and a friend of mine is moving from his house in Connecticut to a new house. Is he moving within Connecticut? When I said two weeks, I meant, like, I don't have a concept of time anymore, and that's when I thought two weeks was from now. Um, but I really meant, like, a week-ish, week and a half-ish. They haven't even taken pictures yet to put the house up on the market, so, like, we have a little bit of time. I'm okay just here. Yeah, I'm just here, too. You know, okay, I feel bad. Fawn is outside my door, and she's whining. And if I, I know if she could open the door that she would. And if I let her back in, she's going to want to leave again because she's a dog. And that's what she does. Well, she's she's my dog. She can't make up her mind. So it's going to be like a whole entire stream of me getting up and leaving and letting her out and letting her back in, which is what happened on the round table that we did on Blind Press's channel that still hasn't gone up yet. Um, <laughs> uh, I got up literally like six or seven times during that stream to let the dog in and out of my room leave the door open I would um, however I don't want to <laughs> uh, yep within the state okay that's good she was she was just let back in my room so uh, if anybody saw a parent that is what happened I don't think they know that I'm live usually I tell them so nobody will bother me in this house but so, in other news, David's Tea is having a 20% off sale on their entire website today, which is awesome. Um, I don't think they ship to the UK, which is stupid. They only have, like, a Canadian and US version of their website. Also, The Sims announced a Star Wars pack. So, like, I was going to do a reaction to the trailer, but there are already people out there who did reactions to that. Like, and it wasn't even really the trailer, it was the Gamescom announcement, because Gamescom is happening right now in, like, wherever the hell Gamescom is. I, I know it was in Germany once, I don't know if it's still in Germany, but, oh goodness.
this stream is a disaster. You should all just leave now. Um, I don't. So, like, the EA announced that they're doing a Sims Star Wars collab, which, like, really just looks like they're collaborating with Disney to bring Star Wars Galaxy's Edge to The Sims 4. Uh, I don't... Okay. Um, I... <laughs> That, that's good. That's good that the whole family is moving. Um, Tony, um, I don't uh, talk about The Sims at all really on this channel. I don't even know if some of you know that I play that game. I haven't played The Sims 4 since launch when it came out like five years ago. Uh, and I played it like a few times back when it launched. That may have been thunder that I just heard outside, but we have a track record of not losing power when it storms. So we're, we should be fine here. Uh, uh, I, I feel like it's really kind of gimmicky that they're doing a Star Wars collaboration pack, but I know a lot of people are excited about it. And apparently they leaked the icon for the pack on their own website by accident, like EA, The Sims, because they're weird. Uh, will you be near or further away from your boyfriend? That's a good question. I think it will be the same distance because he lives in Hawaii uh, and I'll be moving to Virginia. And so, I mean, miles wise, maybe like closer because of like, I'll be further down the East Coast because right now I'm in the Northeastern part of the country. But, like, I, you know, I was thinking about that last night. Uh, I'll have to Google it. Um, let me Google that. <laughs> because I don't know geography. Okay, so according to Google, from Massachusetts to Hawaii is 5,010 miles. And from Virginia is 4,690 miles. Okay, so I am theoretically going to be living closer to him. Thank you for that question, and thank you for prompting me to actually research. Uh, it's funny because I thought... Um, that he would be here right now because he is moderating. He, he, he usually, as of recently, has been moderating the chat. However, he just started a master's program, so he's probably doing homework. And it's five hours behind where he is, so he might actually be eating lunch. Uh, and if he is watching this, hi, Ankar. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> um, yeah, it is good. You know, again, listen, I'm not thrilled about this move, but... Uh, I'm trying to make the best of it. And I, you know, I think that uh, things would be a lot better if we were not still dealing with a pandemic. Because the pandemic has really not been, like, helpful for my mental health. And I'm, I'm sure that you guys watching can agree that geography not blind friendly yeah, that is true. Um, I mean, maps usually are not blind friendly unless you have like a tactile one. But I mean, I try to know like vaguely where things are. Uh, so anyway, pandemic sucks. It hasn't been good for my mental health, mental health, my goodness. And uh, it's not made things easier in my life. Yeah. It's not made things easier, like, everywhere, and it's really unfortunate. There are so many people out of work. I read this article earlier uh, from, like, Boston.com or whatever, like, some local website, that uh, some restaurants in Boston are charging, like, an extra tax for meals because they have to buy PPE and all of this. Like, you know, obviously they have to by hand sanitizer and supposedly they're also required to give their employees personal protective equipment. However, they're taxing the cost of that on people's bills for their food. Like not if you're doing takeout, but if you're dining there, there's like a three to 5%, uh, excuse me, there's like a three to 5% tax 
that apparently is being added on to some people's bills for, you know, PPE or uh, safety or something. And it's like, okay, I, I understand that people are hurting. However, I'm, I don't personally agree with that. I am not looking forward to sending my daughter back to school. Okay, here's something that I've been saying. Uh, and I am a 20-something with no children. But if I had children, and, and this is me talking right now, at this point in my life right now. Uh, if I had children right now, during this pandemic, I personally would do whatever I could to not have them go back to school. Because a lot, now I don't know how it is in the UK. Uh, a friend of mine told me that schools are opening there and the masks requirement is a little iffy. But here in the US, it really differs by state. I know a lot of universities are doing online only. A lot of schools are trying to do hybrid learning or whatever because getting the children back into the classroom is more important than the coronavirus. And listen, I have I have a lot of opinions on that. Um, I don't want to get political, but I okay, it's um we get a fine. What do you mean you get a fine? Like you get a fine if you don't wear a mask or if you is this in relation to the tax for PPE that people are getting on their meals? Because uh, that's, that's not good. Um, I know that some schools are doing hybrid, some are doing remote. They like delayed the start of the school year, like the, for, for K-12 schools. Um, oh, for not sending your kid. Wait, you get a fine if you don't send your daughter to school? Like you can't, is there no option to do remote learning? Because here there's an option to do remote learning or to do hybrid, which is going in and doing remote. There's no option? Okay, I'm going to admit I have not been keeping up with the pandemic in terms of England. How are y'all doing over there? Because from what a friend of mine told me, he lives in the northern part of England. He said that Everything, like, to me, from, from my takeaway, is that everything sounds like it's pretty much back to normal for the most part. Like, you guys can travel. Um, you know, you have to wear masks. Kids are going back to school. But, like, how is it really? It's not good, Northwest. Okay. Yeah, here in the United States, it's not good, like, everywhere. Well, okay. Here in Massachusetts, we're not doing terribly we we're doing better than we were so we had the peak a couple of months ago and then we went down and whatever and then like we went up recently and then we went back down so now we're at like a one percent testing positivity rate so like er there are more tests being done but only about one percent of people are coming back positive which is great hawaii however where Ankar lives uh they just had to go under another two-week stay-at-home advisory by their governor as of yesterday, which is scary. Uh, so my college has all of these new markers and plexiglass things everywhere, and I can navigate around really good, but I'm taking a class that is in person, and I have no idea what that will be like. Oh, God. Um, Gabby, do you know, like, well, my school is doing a hybrid thing. Yeah, I, that's, I think that's what Jess said. Her university was doing too. Um, do you know... Well, okay. I'm assuming that they wouldn't have the normal like class capacity as they would. T some of the classes that I had in college, actually, like there were maybe eight or ten of us total in the, in the room. But we were in a smaller room like we weren't in a normal sized like class room yeah yeah so I I I'm gonna be honest the plexiglass thing like I can do whatever it's fine you know I might like hit my hand against it but whatever um the markers on the ground I hate those <laughs> I can't see them Kane doesn't see them because it's just like tape on the ground um and it's really annoying. 
So actually, I was at Walmart the other day, and there were these the signage um, that they had were on the end caps of the aisles. Like they were up like at eye level. And I mean, this wouldn't help anybody who's like completely blind, but like for me, it helped because it was like bright red for like, do not go this way. And then green for like, go this way. Cause you have to snake through the aisles and you're supposed to follow the way and people don't do that. Um, so It's just, it's fun. I really. Uh, the markers will be interesting. Yeah, the markers are annoying. Um, you know, the whole thing about this pandemic is that it's really not blind accessible. Like, I, I almost want to do a panel at some point with a few of you guys because, like, it's a little different for me, like, as somebody with low vision compared to, like, somebody who has no vision navigating the pandemic because like this is literally the worst thing in my opinion to happen to a blind person because so much of what we do is reliant on touch and uh, I've not been out to the shops yet I'm lucky you are lucky it's a nightmare out there um so much of what we do is reliant on touch especially if you can't see anything and you know this pandemic like you can't touch things. I mean, I don't want to touch things. I get anxious when the people at Starbucks hand my drink to me. I do a mobile order and then I go in and get it because the drive-in, the drive-through line has been stupid long recently. Um, and it's just, it's dumb. Hey, so true. Hello. Hello, Kelvin. Yes, uh, I completely agree. It is, uh, I plan to do a video where I start to talk about the first few weeks yeah, I think um, the first few weeks were like, yeah, I think that that would be a really good idea, Gabby, because I'm really interested to hear other people's take on this, especially in the disability community, because while some things have been brought to light in terms of like, you know, hey, a lot of jobs can be done remotely, who would have thought uh, giving disabled people more of an opportunity to work from home when employers would say that they couldn't initially, like, that's great. However, there are a lot of inaccessibilities happening with remote learning and remote work, uh, you know, especially if you're blind and you have to use a screen reader and the thing might not be accessible with a screen reader. But even just like going out, like I have, I've barely been to the store and, and I'm very fortunate to live with sighted people. Otherwise, I would just be ordering all of my stuff through Instacart. Uh, and the experiences that we had personally with Instacart ordering from them a few times back in like April was terrible. Hi, Chris. Um, because we would, a lot of the things that we got from the Instacart people were not what we ordered. Like, we literally got, like, stuff added on to our grocery order that we didn't order. Like, they just went ham. It was crazy. I order online. Yeah, I order everything online. Um, there's a grocery store chain here in the Northeast. I don't know if it's, like, nationwide. It's called Stop and Shop, and they do Peapod, which is, like, their own online service, like, for the store, specifically for that chain. But there was, like, a four-week waiting list at one point for them to fulfill orders. And this was back during, like, the beginning of the pandemic when everybody was really, really freaking out and stockpiling things. Now, I don't know. Um, I have had good experiences with Instacart in the past. However, when we had a couple of people doing deliveries for us um, a couple of months ago, it didn't go that well. But it really depends on who you get. It's like with an Uber driver. You know, like you're these are people who are like doing this as a side hustle. And sometimes um, it's really dependent on who the person is. And that will like basically determine your entire experience that you're going to have. So that's fun. Um, did any of you watch the video that Molly did recently? Molly Burke, she interviewed Bill Gates about COVID because I haven't watched it yet. Ankar sent it to me like without context the other night. And it took me a minute to realize that it was her like from the thumbnail. Um, and 
I have a couple of questions. One would be, why is she interviewing? And, and I mean, I'm sure that this could be answered if I actually watched the video, which I'm pretty sure I will do anyway. Not right now. I'm not using StreamYard. We are not going to, we are not going to watch on the stream. We're not going to watch her on the stream. Um, I don't watch her now. I, I watch her occasionally. Um, but I wonder why she interviewed him about the virus when she could have interviewed like, oh, I don't know, an emergency room doctor or an ICU nurse or a medical researcher or like literally anybody else on the planet. And also, how do you interview Bill Gates? How did she contact him? Excuse me, I need to drink some of this water. Like, how do you contact Bill Gates and be like, hey, I want to interview you? Maybe through her agent. Yeah, that's what Ankar said. I'm pretty sure that her agent did. But even then, it's like, hey, like I have one of my clients wants to interview you for COVID. Like, I don't get, um, in terms of the whole disability thing, my college sucks when it comes to accessibility and accommodations. But I did watch it and that's what I thought. Yeah. And yeah, Gabby, I know um, your university is awful. Speaking of which, I have a video coming out next week, in a week from today, that I finally edited about my experience with school, but not like university, with like K-12 schooling. And then I'm going to do a separate video at some point about my college experience. Uh, like you could have interviewed someone else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Literally, she could have interviewed an ICU nurse. I mean, listen, it's really cool that she was able to interview Bill Gates. Like, I'm not going to lie. That's awesome that she was able to interview Bill Gates. Because who the hell do you know that can interview Bill Gates? Um, but at the same time, it's like, why about COVID? Because like all I know, and, and I, this is me talking remembering what I heard once, not doing research currently, so please come at me. Um, from what I remember, Bill Gates and his wife, question mark, were um, like throwing money at researchers or trying to research possible cures for the virus. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. Like, I, there's some connection between him and the pandemic, but still, Bill Gates... And, and again, like, how do I interview Bill Gates? Bill Gates is not going to want me interviewing him. I am a nobody. Um, one, day, uh, one day it could be the president she could interview. Yeah. You know, that would actually be really interesting. And if she does, I hope that she is able to publicize it and be like hey i'm going to interview this high profile person like just in general not even about the pandemic be like what kind of questions do you want me to ask and i hope that if this day comes i'm not saying it will because i don't know but if it does that um the blind community will show up because i think that um the united states as a whole has a lot that it could still do in terms of disability rights and disability access. Like, listen, we have the ADA. It was passed 30 years ago. Thank goodness we have that. But there is still more that needs to be done. I mean, look at the unemployment rate that is in this community. It is high. We have a high unemployment rate. And it's really sad because, like, I don't know. Don't even get me started. I want to work. Um, I know that some of you in the chat also want to work. And I know that some of you out in the broader blind and disability community also want to work. But unfortunately, um, that is that is not the case for everybody. And uh, the pandemic kind of screwed us all over. Yeah, I said that when I spoke about the ADA. Yeah, I remember. I remember that, Gabby. I watched your ADA video. Uh, by the way, everybody go watch Gabby's ADA video. It was fantastic. If I can pull up a link real quick, I will post it in the chat for y'all to watch because YouTube only lets certain people post links. I am not on YouTube. I am on Twitter. What is happening? Uh, 
anyway, so um, my my point is here is that the pandemic really messed up a lot of things, and I hope. So, like, actually, I kind of irrelevant to this. I got an email from my local pharmacy. Well, not local, from Walgreens. Um, and they said that the flu shots are in, like, that they have them. And I'm thinking, like, isn't it early? Like, it's August. But, like, I had mine last year in mid-September. Here is the video that Gabby did about the ADA. There is the link to that. It should be clickable in chat. Um... Highly recommend it. Hello, Simon. How are you today? How's your day going? I wish it was government funded so we don't have to spend a fortune. I, yeah, I wish that a lot of things were different, especially like I just wish that we weren't dealing with this pandemic anymore because it's been a while and I don't want to complain because I don't really leave the house anyway, but uh, I, I, I at least would like the option to. <laughs> and also, I haven't seen On Car since last year um, because our plans for ACB convention and, and to see each other this summer got completely destroyed by COVID. So um, I'm bitter. Excellent, distinctly not zombie like. You, I'm here and I'm glad that you're not zombie like. Of course, Gabby, I love to share your content. Also, I haven't watched your cane video yet. Gabby got a new cane for anybody who's interested. She got it from Ambutech and it's really pretty. It's all colorful. I highly recommend you watch her video on that. Uh, relating, same with Mia. It's no fun. I know. And you guys are in separate countries. Is the Canadian border open to the United States? Do you know? Does anybody in chat know? Because, like, I've been Googling this and I haven't found a straight answer. And when I go to Maine, they've been talking on the news about it reopening and, like, tentative dates. But, I mean, that was last month and I haven't heard anything about it recently. But there have been some French-Canadian people, like, in Maine. Like, I don't know if they were down from Quebec or what, but it's just been a weird time. Uh, I have a daughter and I can't take her many places. I know. So she must be going crazy too. I just wish, this is going to sound stupid, but like, I kind of wish that somebody had invented teleportation by now. Right. But yeah. So is the Canadian border open? This is probably something again that I could figure out with Google, but. From what I've... Yeah, okay. Last I heard it was either closed or quarantine required. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I think too, Dustin. Huh. Me too. Honestly, same. Yeah, I wish that we had teleportation. Okay, uh, to the US, no. To anyone else, I'm not sure. We probably don't want assumptions flooding in. Okay, and this is coming from a Canadian. So... So the border is not closed to the United States, right? I'm going to just Google this so we have a clear answer. Uh, Canadian border. Is the Canadian border open to the United States? Uh, it says here, the Canadian-U.S. border remains closed to non-essential travel, but as Janet Dirks reports, there is a loophole. The border is closed for non-essential travelers, but Americans are still crossing, and that is as of August 14th. And that is on ctvnews.ca, so that is a Canadian website. Um... So that's very interesting, basically. So a uh, funny story to go off of that, actually. I have a friend who was in Canada for quite a few months um, because his girlfriend lives there. And they were somewhere on the west coast of Canada, like kind of near British Columbia. British Columbia, kind of near Vancouver. Um, 
And he was stuck because of the travel ban. And because there were only like two flights going out, I think, total per day to the U.S., Maybe I could be wrong, but there were like no flights happening. And then eventually he was able to come home, but he had to take like three planes. Uh, do you know Australia has snow? Never known to have snow before. I thought that it snowed in the mountains in Australia. Does it not? I honestly am not up on my world. Like weather information i know it snows in the mountains in new zealand it doesn't okay i learned two things from you today tony one is that you apparently are fined for not sending your children back to in-person school in england and the other is that australia has snow <laughs> it's interesting climate change is weird huh uh, so basically, Canadian border is still closed, but U.S. Um, uh, Americans are still going, which, like, are we really surprised? No. And honestly, people are still coming to Massachusetts and not quarantining. So, uh, again, are we really surprised? No. And if you were not here earlier, some restaurants in Boston are charging a 3 to 5% tax on meals because of coronavirus. And when I say on meals, I mean dining out. Uh, as far as I can tell for Australia, it can get very cold and they're going through their winter right now. Yeah, I know they are, Jordan, um, because it is like opposite seasons. Uh, they, I think they're at the end of their winter, though, right? Doesn't their fall start for, or spring start fairly soon? Um, because we're at the end of August. So I don't know. I, you know, that is the place that I would like to go at some point is Australia. I've never been. The farthest east I have been is France, and the farthest west I have been is Nevada. <laughs> so, um, I, I, I would love to do more traveling, but again, of course, COVID is kicking my butt and not allowing me to get on a plane anywhere. Theoretically, I could get on a plane, but I just don't want to, I'm afraid, um, I would love to visit America. We would love to have you. Please come visit America. Most Americans love when people come visit. I want to go to the UK. I went to the UK. Let me tell you about my story about the, my UK trip. Okay. I went. I, I went by myself, uh, which I think I talked about in previous videos. Fun fact. For those of you in the chat, we're going to get personal. Um, I have an ex who lives over there. We don't talk about him. But, uh, and we're not going to talk about him. However, um, I went there for a week during a school vacation because we both so happened to have that same week off. And it was great. I had a lot of fun. I got to see London. I got to do some of the touristy things. That is when I went to France. And the French authorities got mad at me when we were coming back in to the UK or the UK authorities. Some authorities at the passport checkpoint got mad. Um, where I will get to that got mad when we were coming back in to the, to England from France, because I had an American passport and everybody else in the car had a, you know, a, an English England, European Union, whatever, passport that allowed them to country hop. Uh, and I was a minor uh, at the time. And they, the authorities were understandably concerned about what the situation was. So um, the, I was afraid that they were not going to let me back into England. They did, though. They just asked me, like, who I was, why I was there, who I was staying with, and how long, and blah, blah. Um, I was in southern England in, like, the Portsmouth ish area question mark it wasn't too too far of a car ride to dover which is where we caught the ferry to calais um i think it was like a couple hours hour maybe kind of like somewhere between london and dover if that gives you any idea i don't want to say like the exact city because that's gonna like dox everything but um it was a good time i i would like to go back at some point um, because I, I want to see more of London. The day that I went, it rained, because why wouldn't it? 
However, the weather was a lot nicer there that week than it was here at home. When I landed here at home, uh, I landed in the middle of a blizzard and I had sneakers on and not a winter coat. So that was fun. And when I left to go to England from here, my flight was delayed by like almost 24 hours because there was some weird issue with the plane. I live near the beach. Visit Blackpool. I Where is Blackpool? Is that south, east, west, north? I can just look this up. I'm going to look this up. You guys are coming along with me on a Google search journey tonight. It is east. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah, I'll visit there. I'll, I'll go back to England once um, the pandemic allows me to. And I think that the European Union, I think the European border is still close to the um, United States. Let's see. Is the European, oh, is the Europe travel ban lifted? Perfect. Thank you, top match Google. On 11th of June, the commission adopted a communication recommending the further extension of the restriction until 30th of June, blah, blah, blah. Uh, approach to the gradual lifting of the restriction on non-essential travel to the EU as of 1st of July. And this was as of August 7th. Okay, but is it lifted? And that didn't answer my question. Oh, August 14th. When will we be able to travel to Europe? I have my magnifier on and I cannot. Internal and external borders have started to reopen but many foreign travelers remain banned from visiting Europe. But are Americans allowed to? Uh, from July, um, rather than hop the pond and staying home, blah, blah. Okay, but currently, uh, those restrictions were extended until July 1st when the European Union began to uh, welcoming back travelers from a list of 14 countries that have been approved by its leaders. The U.S. was not one of them. It does not say that. I added that in because I know the U.S. was not one of them. Uh, it's not a legally binding list, but the EU leaders have agreed that member countries should not independently lift uh, restrictions for unlisted countries before it is agreed upon. Nevertheless, there have already been some deviances, including Germany, which is only allowed in seven of the 10 countries on the list, and Croatia, which in July reopened its borders to all international travelers, as long as they provide evidence of a negative COVID-19 test result procured within 48 hours of arriving. But are they really going to? Uh, there are also numerous exceptions to the European travel ban, including for family members, obviously, uh, passengers in transit and students. It's funny because remember when the United States was telling students to get out if they were here on a visa and their university was going to be doing remote learning um, or to transfer and then they lifted that real quick because everybody got mad. Uh, meanwhile, Europe's travel... Uh, okay, but is it... Is the travel ban lifted? Okay, anyone can travel to Croatia... Blah, blah. That's great. That's not what I want to know. Um, maybe if I... Oh, okay. Here we see, Here we go here, finally. Uh, the European Union's travel restrictions include an exemption for passengers in transit. U.S. citizens and permanent residents are allowed to enter the United States from European countries, but they must fly into one of 15 U.S. airports when they do so. Uh, okay, France is welcoming travelers from the EU and from countries on the list. So basically, it sounds like that everybody's kind of doing their own thing, and I don't think that the United States is allowed back anywhere from what I'm seeing. They're allowing people from the United Kingdom. I have to let the dog back in. She's throwing a temper tantrum. So I'm not... This article is not helpful. <laughs> like... Uh, and I'm not even looking 
looking at the chat, so I don't know if any of you have actually answered my um, my burning question here. But from what I'm seeing, me as a United States citizen, uh, I am not allowed to travel to Europe right now. <laughs> uh, let's see, July first, France, France, blah blah. Oh, Italy reopened to travelers on June 3rd, but not to those from the United States. All right, I'm just going to stop reading this because I like we already know what's happening here. The US is banned from Europe, but Europe can come here is the gist of what I'm seeing. Uh, let's see. I also want to go to Italy. I want to go to Italy so bad. Uh what magnifier do you use? I use the built-in thing on my Mac, aptly named Zoom, not to be confused with the video conferencing service. Um, literally, if you have a Mac, go into System Preferences, Accessibility, Zoom, turn it on. Uh, if you have a Windows PC, and if you're curious about using the magnifier on that, uh, then, you know, go to, I don't know, like, control panel or whatever, ease of access, maybe, and turn on magnifier. I cannot remember for the life of me how to do it on a PC. Uh, or just use Zoom text, but you have to pay for that. Um, I've heard that Mac is really good at AT options. It is. I um, have, I'll admit I have little to no experience with voiceover on my Mac. I have more experience with it on my phone because it's easier to use on my phone. Um, but I do use the magnifier. Not as often as I should. Like, I'm going to admit I strain my eyes a lot <laughs> for no reason other than I'm stubborn. Um, also, this computer is old. It's like five years old. Uh, but it works really well. Same. Yeah, Christina, I know that you said you um, just recently started using Zoom text more, which is great because, like, I listen, I'm, I'm very glad that there are all these different assistive technology options out there because everybody needs to have different, like, options to choose from. Um, but so, well, I was just going to say, but I think that the market could be oversaturated, but it's actually not. There's just like Zoom text, Mac, um, Mac, Zoom text, Zoom magnifier, magic. Do they, does Freedom Scientific still use, do magic? I used it once. I hated it. Um, and then for screen readers, you have, like, more options. There's voiceover, JAWS, narrator, um, window eyes. Does window eyes still exist? Am I stupid? NVDA. Um, and that's it? I don't know. I have to support a user with Zoom text, and it definitely is going through some growing pains, integrating all the JAWS tech. Yeah, that's understandable. Um, I actually have a friend who teaches a computer science course in MATLAB. And they have a student who um, uses JAWS as their primary way of, you know, accessing things because the student is blind. And MATLAB is not accessible. Uh, so Ankar and myself and a couple of others have been going back and forth trying to best assist in any way that we can, uh, because, you know, we have the blind hive mind at our <laughs> disposal. Um, <laughs> I, I do not know the student that who is blind. I just know the teacher because I'm friends with the teacher. Uh, but it's been a, an experience for all of us. It's been very interesting, actually. Uh, it was way easier to work with before the merge. Use my touchpad. What merge? Um, because I know that... Oh, you mean the merge that happened with AI squared and freedom scientific. 
um, because like Vespero has Jaws and Zoom Text and everything under um, all one umbrella, right? Because like that's what I'm thinking you're talking about, but I could be wrong. And I, for context, I didn't even know that that was a thing that they were all under one like umbrella company until last year's ACB convention when they had somebody from Vespero talking at general session. Because I don't keep up with assistive tech. I am literally the worst blind person you will ever meet. I do everything the sighted way. Except for some stuff. But like. It <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what was easier to work with before the merge? JAWS or Zoom text? Because I'll be honest with you. I haven't used Zoom text in a long time. The only reason why I would download it onto my Mac. Uh, and, and I don't want to have to, well, I might still have an active license with them, actually. Um, do they expire? Hi, Kayla. <laughs> the only reason why I would download it onto my Mac is because I like that you can scroll around the screen with the keyboard shortcuts. Um, and you can't do that on Zoom for Mac. Like the built-in magnifier, I just have to move my cursor all around, and it's annoying. Like if I'm trying to read something, I can't just scroll straight left or right. I, I, this is a stupid thing to complain about. But um, do Zoom text licenses expire? Because I had one when I was in college, like five years ago, and actually I had to call them to have them remove a license from a computer that I no longer used because I didn't have access to that computer, uh, and that was fun. But I only had, yes, they do. Okay, thank you, Ankar, for for being here and um, informing me. So, yeah, I no longer have a license with Zoom text. <laughs> By the way, hi, Ankar. Um, plus, I had it for PC, uh, so I'm assuming that even if I wanted to get it on my Mac, I would have to get a different license anyway because it's for the Mac. Because I don't think that the PC and Mac download is the same download. Like I'm assuming they're separate things. Cause I know that they only started doing zoom text for Mac fairly recently. Uh, I just got here. Sorry. I'm late. You know what? You're right on time. <laughs> We've just been talking about international travel bans and just like, you know, the scary pandemic things me moving. Did you notice there's nothing on the wall behind me except for the mirrored thing? Like, it's been a day. Hello, the blind mage. How are you? Uh, I cannot, but I've been talking for almost an hour. What did we even talk about? So, since we have more people here, I'm going to ask this question again. Has anybody watched the Molly Burke Bill Gates interview? And if so, what did you think of it? Because I still haven't watched it yet. I'm very intrigued. One criticism, not criticism, but one question that I have is in the beginning of the video, because I scrubbed through it, uh, in the beginning she was sitting on a couch and then she moved to a different part of the room with her kitchen behind her and I think that she was better off on the couch because the background was more neutral. That's just me. I don't know if she had to like move the computer somewhere else, but it, whatever. Ankar, I know you watched it. You sent me the link. <laughs> I don't watch Molly. The Blind Mage, if you go back two streams ago, not right now, but like later, um, I did a stream earlier this week and uh, we watched her NFB speech, which by the way, can I just say one thing, two things, two things about it. Oh, it was way out of left field. Yeah, I, again, like, how do I interview Bill Gates? Uh, I also strain my eyes a lot. I need to force myself to use a screen reader full time. Yeah, Sarah, I used JAWS like 100% when I was in high school. And then I got a Mac and I tried using voiceover and it was so different. And I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So I just started using Zoom more because I used Zoom text a lot. Um you know, as well previously. Like, I, I learned Zoom text before I learned JAWS. Um, hi, Sarah. <laughs> um, and now here we are. So two things about the NFB thing. One, how come literally nobody, and when I say nobody, I mean, how come neither Molly nor the NFB have talked about it? 
Like they haven't, not, neither of them have mentioned it. I'm very shocked that she hasn't done a video on her channel being like, hey, I spoke at this blindness convention. Uh, and two, how come in her, and, and this is going to be a very nitpicky thing. And if you guys watched the stream that I did a couple of days ago where we watched her NFB speech, like you will hear Ankar and I talk about this. Um, how come in the NFB thing, she's there in like sweats, like a hoodie and sweatpants. But for the Bill Gates thing, she's dressed in like a really nice, like flattering dress. Like, I don't understand that. Uh, I can't do live without speech. You can have your headphones in, um, and then we went, we can't hear the screen reader, if that's what you're wondering. Because I know that that's what Blind Press does when she goes live. Uh, that convention was a joke. Glad I never wasted money to attend. <laughs> oh, the Blind Mage. It was free. Then you didn't have to pay to go to the NFB convention. It was 100% free this year because it was virtual. High divided by his site. Um... It was free because, okay, well, it was free with a caveat. According to a few attendees, um, and when I say attendees, I mean friends of mine who went, uh, they did say that there were a few things on the schedule that you had to pay for to go to. But, like, the actual attendee, like, the attendance of the convention, like, you could go for free to, like, the general sessions and stuff. Yeah, this year. Yeah, dude, it was free. <laughs> the You had to pay to go to the ACB convention. There was a $25 administrative fee, which, like, listen, I love ACB. I, I, I'm not one of those, like, eat, sleep, breathe, live, die hard ACB fans, but I prefer ACB to NFB in a lot of aspects, which... Um, I talked about in my stream the other night, which the link to that is down in the description of this video. It's the panel discussion. Gabby was there, Jess was there, and Nat and Christina, and we all had a very nice, wonderful, informative discussion about the ACB and NFB. Uh, so ACB charged attendees a $25 administrative fee this year for a convention, um, which I understand because... They had to pay for something somehow because they lost hundreds of thousands of dollars like by not doing like regular convention. <laughs> Plus you met me at ACB. Yeah. So uh, for the chat. Um, Ankar, I'm going to tell the story of how we met. Okay. It's personal hour here. Uh, five years ago, I was <laughs> in an elevator. Hi, Leah. Uh, um, five years ago, I was in an elevator. This was when I was still working with Fawn. So I had her with me. Um, and I met Ankar very briefly for literally two seconds. And there was somebody else in there too, a, a former friend of mine. Uh, we said hello. And then I left. <laughs> and, and that's how we met. No, um, we reconnected uh, last year through the ACB Next Generation affiliate which I talked about that affiliate in the stream the other night. ACB has a special interest affiliate for young professionals and students and young people. You don't have to be working uh, between the ages of 26 and 40 because like there's a big age gap in membership in ACB. I don't think it's the same as NFB. Um, but anyway, we met there and at some point, I, we'll probably do like a Q&A stream whenever we're both able to about anything and everything within reason. Uh, so I'm just going to leave that at that because there's a little bit more to the story, but like, I don't want to go into the whole thing now because like, I don't know. There's really no need to. Um, and again, I'm not using StreamYard right now. I'm just using the YouTube thing. Uh, so I can't like add anybody to the stream, which I can't, I've been trying to find out how to, uh, if StreamYard has a dark mode, because I freaking hate the black on white. Uh, I find it really annoying. I was going to do the stream tonight in StreamYard, but I didn't. And also, I accidentally turned off display names in StreamYard the other day, and I cannot for the life of me figure out how to turn them back on. Uh, so, I mean, we're going to figure that out at some point, but 
from what I'm seeing, because I'm on the StreamYard dashboard thing right now in another tab, there's no dark mode, which is really dumb. Uh, so that's fun. For anybody wondering about the podcast, because I know none of you asked for this, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. We are still working on it, uh, as you can tell, and as you all probably know, I am in the process of moving. Onkar just started grad school, um, you know, an online master's program. So we're both busy, and we have a six-hour time difference. Uh, but we will get there in terms of recording. Uh, and we're also waiting on a couple of things from other people. So, like, we're not 100% on our own schedule. Will you be doing a moving vlog? That is a good question. Probably. I haven't filmed anything during this move. I've just, like, talked anecdotally, like, hey, there's furniture gone from my room now, which is why things look different. So, like, in the video, and, and I addressed this in next week's video, but in the video that is coming out next week, um, it was filmed before the video that came out today. So, in the video that came out today, I had, like, for part of it, I was sitting on my bed because I no longer have a bench at the foot of it. And uh, in, you know, the video that is coming out next week, obviously, was filmed before that. So I was, it's just a whole thing. I found it. Uh, I found it tough to film a moving vlog. Yeah, I don't. So I want to, but honestly, I think that I might just film like a, like, journey to the new house vlog. Because it's like 10 to 12 hour drive to where we're moving to depending on if you like how many times you stop and we've done it once with um fawn like we went down there once for a week with her stayed with family obviously they like you know had pets it was fine uh and we stopped quite a few times at rest stops and things you know to stretch our legs and to let her you know relieve herself so it's really not that bad of a drive but i mean honestly like things are pretty much packed for the most part, except for a few, like, bits here and there. Um, and oh. next week... Oh, I'm sorry about the noise. My water bottle. Next week, um, like I said earlier, they're coming to take pictures uh, to get the house on the market for the week after. Anyway, um... My water bottle is so loud. I'm so sorry for all the annoying noise. So it's just been a whole process. Uh, and, and I hate it. <laughs> do you have a P.O. box? I don't. That's a good question, too. Um, Do you guys want me to open one? Because I've debated on that. I think it would be cool if you did a vlog. I, I will try to. It's weird because I'm going back and forth between here and um, my, my family has another home uh, in Maine. So, like, that's where I film a lot of my videos as well. For those of you who can see, like, sometimes my, like, where I am, like, location-wise will be drastically different. Uh, that's why. Yes. Okay. Well, I will set one up after I move. Uh, because currently I really don't think that there's a point in setting one up now since I am moving probably within, like, a month or two. The... The, the hope, the plan is that the house will not be on the market for that long. Because like I said earlier, there are like no houses for sale. And the realtor said that she has already apparently been putting the word out and knows of people who are interested in this house or in like the price range. Uh, I have Bible study, but I will catch up on the replay. That's okay, Leah. I hope you have a very nice time and I really appreciate you coming by. Have a great evening, Diana, and chat. Thank you, Leah. I hope you do, too. I really appreciate you coming and watching, and I hope you have a nice time at Bible study. Um, that, speak, going off of that, I, that's something I haven't done in a long time is go to church. Um, the last few times I've been in a church have been for funeral services. And then, obviously, with the whole coronavirus thing, I haven't been to a church anyway. But I think that, like, so there's like some beef, not beef. There's like some, no, my, my parents never really liked the, um, 
the head priest at the church that uh, that we went to when I was younger um, that I had, you know, received communion and confirmation at. Uh, and then it came out later that he was um, sexually abusing children. So that was that was fun. Um, but anyway. Uh, um, so I, I, things are going to be different, probably for the better. Uh, on car, stop laughing. By the way, I know we weren't here earlier, but I am moving closer to you by like, stupid question. How do you even open a PO box? Th you know what, Gabby? I have no idea. I'm going to Google that. <laughs> Uh, I think you might have to pay, but I could be wrong. Okay, it says, step one, um, search for post office locations near you using the search bar under reserve a new P.O. box. Step two, choose a P.O. box, uh, a post office location. Choose a post office location and make selections on your desired P.O. box size and payment period. Okay, so you do have to pay. Uh, enter your contact and billing information. Okay, so that is from the USPS website. So that's like literally from the post office website. So it sounds like that you can do it online. Uh, so I'm apparently going to be opening a PO box after I move. Uh, it looks very straightforward. Um, I guess you just have to search for it on the USPS website and go from there. And there are steps to follow and you have to pay for it. And it probably varies like the size obviously and, and the duration I have no idea but anyway Ankar I'm moving closer to you I did the math I did the google search uh and what did I say earlier like let me go back 5,010 miles to like 4690 so I'm moving like 400 miles closer to you 300 miles closer to you so I guess that's something <laughs> Um, uh, so basically the takeaway from the last two minutes is that I'm opening a P.O. box and I have to go to church more often. Good stream. <laughs> I can already feel the sub count dropping. Seriously, though, for anybody who stayed this long, I commend you. I don't even know what I've been talking about. It's been over an hour. Like, I... I don't know. So I went to Starbucks today. Uh, I did order for my salted caramel mocha. And for some reason, it said it was going to take like 15 minutes for them to make it, which is fine. So I was with my father and we had to run another errand. Um, and I was like, well, it's going to take 15 minutes. Let's just like go you know, do the other thing. We had to get tea, like iced tea from my mother at Duncan's. And so we went and got the iced tea. And then by the time that was done, it was like ready, which it probably was ready anyway. <laughs> Great to chat about nothing sometimes. I agree. Unsubscribing. <laughs> Thanks, Ankar. I appreciate it. <laughs> you know what? I would say I'm unsubscribing from you too, but you have no content on your channel. And I don't even know if I'm subscribed to you. If you want to subscribe to me, though, it doesn't matter because you'll still be a moderator on my channel. I'll just be sad because I'll lose a sub and it'll be like you who lost the sub. I have the option to remove you as a moderator <laughs> from your chat message. Tread slowly and carefully i'm not gonna remove you as a moderator this is a joke everybody watching this is a joke do not get mad this is a joke so anyway back to what i was saying earlier i have stuff in my cart on david's tea that i was going to order which is not what i was saying earlier um i hate how every time i go to their website Oh, it's not making me do that. I hate how every time I go to their website, it needs me to choose my country and language. And the only options are Canadian English, Canadian French, and U.S. English. Ends at midnight. What time is it? 
Oh, and uh, I can get 2% cash back with Ebates. <sighs> you guys want to hear what's in my David's tea cart? You, you are probably not interested, but I'm going to tell you anyway. We have Sunshine Chai, which I'm going to, if I can, open the link to that in a new tab and talk about it a little bit. Uh, we have Lavender Honey Matcha. And we have a Fall Faves 12 Tea Sampler Kit. Because everything on David's Tea's website is 20% off today. And they closed all U.S. stores. Because they like to shatter my dreams. So. Fall Faves. Yes, I know you were just joking. Yes, Christina, Fall Faves. We're going to talk about this. All right. So about this Sunshine Chai. I wanted to try it a while ago. I'm going to try it now. Here we are. I'm going to literally read you the description on this website. Oh, speaking of which, I once applied for a job to be like a copy editor for Wayfair. Um, this is relevant because I was looking on Wayfair's website yesterday for a desk. <laughs> um, and I did not get the position. However, uh, whoever is copy editing the product descriptions for that website is not doing a good job because there are a lot of grammatical errors. So anyway, the description for this thing. <laughs> Craving a cup of cozy? Curl up with this shareable... This is for the fall tea set. All right. This is not for sunshine chai. I am in the wrong tab. Sunshine chai. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. I'm blind. Um, uh, it says buy 10 ounces, get 10% off. Or buy 20 ounces, get 15% off. I'm not buying 10 ounces of this one tea. This is a rooibos blend. It is caffeine free. The perfect ultra soothing everyday must have with cinnamon, coconut, ginger, cardamom, black pepper, and vibrant turmeric. The golden spice that's been hailed for its glow boosting properties for centuries. This caffeine chai is a digestion tea your tum will love. It's lightly spiced, sweet, creamy, and deliciously invigorating after a heavy meal. And it looks good. It says, what makes it great? This vibrant chai is made with turmeric, the golden spice that's been hailed as an Ayurvedic. Ur Ayurvedic. I have a degree in English, and I can't pronounce this. Ayurvedic uh, skin saver for centuries. Made with invigorating spices like ginger, cardamom, cinnamon, and cloves. The perfect way to digest after a heavy meal. This coconut turmeric chai is caffeine-free. So is the main flavor coconut? That's my question. All right. This Fall Faves Tea Kit. Uh, it has a 5 out of 5 rating for two reviews for the Fall Faves Tea Kit. I don't... I Let me look at the... Writing for Sunshine Chai. I know it was pretty high too. Because David's Tea added recently, and by recently I mean like last year, the ability to um, leave product reviews. Sunshine Chai has a four and a half star rating based on 32 reviews. That's pretty good. Considering their Be the Change Tea, which I wanted to get to support the bees, has like a one star or two star review because it's awful. Um, <laughs> Uh, masala chai is the best. I wouldn't know, Ankar, because I've never tried it. I need to check out their website. Um, the website is davidstea.com. D-A-V-I-D-S-T-E-A dot com. You lost me at coconut. Yeah, they literally have so many chai flavors. It's unreal. I got a chai sampler pack, I think, like, last year. And I still have some tea left from it uh, because the sampler pack, it was like a bunch of like pouches that were tied together and they're pretty big samples. This sampler pack that I'm going to talk about, this Fall Faves one, stolen from India. <laughs> What's stolen from India? The masala chai tea? Um, this Fall Faves pack that I'm going to talk about is... Uh, it comes in a box, and there are 12 little, I guess you would call them, like, capsules of tea. They're, they're like, little tiny pots. They're, like, twist-off lids. It's, like, the size of, um, 
I don't know what to compare them to. If you've ever gotten a sample from anything at Lush, it's like the size of the standard sample pot that they use. <sighs> ah, so this fall faves that I was reading the description to earlier because I'm stupid. Okay, craving a cup of cozy? Curl up with this shareable fall tea gift set pa uh, packed with 12 of our fave sweater weather leaf blends. Let's say leaf or loose leaf. Loose leaf blends. I missed a whole word. From sweet to spicy to downright decadent, it's got something for everyone. Includes pumpkin chai, maple syrup oolong, which I love. It tastes like pancakes. Forever nuts, which I also love. If Okay. Sidebar. If you are new to David's tea and you don't know what to get, get forever nuts. Everybody loves it. It's like a fan fave, cult classic, must try gateway tea. Please, for the love of God, just like try it. And are they still doing tea samples? I have to look at that because they used to give you samples if you ordered from the website. Uh, okay. Forever Nuts, apple cider, um, cardamom French toast, salted caramel oolong, which is new, sweet potato pie, which may have been out last year, vanilla cappuccino, Strawberry rhubarb parfait, which I can guarantee you I probably will not like. Just beat it. Beet is spelled like the food, B-E-E-T. Uh, organic super ginger and cranberry pear, which I believe cranberry pear is also new. I feel like that the next stream I do should just be me reading things off of websites and messing up half the time. It lists the ingredients for all these teas. I'm not going to like go through that unless you guys really want to hear like the whole thing about all these teas I don't know if any of them are caffeine free I've had the apple cider tea before and I really like it I've had actually pretty much all of these teas before except for no I've had maybe about half let me see there's a lot of things listed I've had apple cider um, I've had cardamom french toast the cranberry pear is new. Forever Nuts I love. I have not tried Just Beat It. I have tried maple syrup oolong and I've gotten it a couple of times. I had it once. They made it for me as a latte when I went into a store and then I bought some. And then I got like a sample of some. I don't. It's really good. It legit. I kid you not. It tastes like pancakes. And it smells like pancakes. Like if you want a tea that tastes like food, this is it. Um... I've had pumpkin chai. It's okay. It it doesn't taste like... Okay, you know a pumpkin spice latte, how it has like the spices of the pumpkin pie filling, but not any pumpkin flavor? Pumpkin chai tea is the opposite of that. It literally tastes like pumpkin and chai. It's not bad. I, I don't mind it. Um, salted caramel oolong sounds like something I would love. Strawberry rhubarb parfait I probably would not like, but let's look at the ingredients for that. We have apple hibiscus right away. I know I'm not going to like it. I don't like hibiscus. Uh, raisins, carrot, artificial flavoring, which includes strawberry and rhubarb. Uh, beetroot, yogurt bits. And then it says what's in the yogurt bits. Uh, strawberry and rhubarb. So there's strawberry and rhubarb in it, as well as strawberry and rhubarb artificial flavoring. Super ginger I've had before, and I love that as well. I, I used to have, like, a box of the tea bags of it. And it was really fun because there was, like, a drawing of, like, an arm, like, making a muscle on the bag or on the box. And it was it was fun. Uh, sweet potato pie I think might have been out last year, but I didn't try it. It sounds familiar. And vanilla cappuccino I thought was all year round. Funny enough, I don't know if there's any cappuccino. There's coffee beans. Yeah, okay, so there is coffee beans, but is there vanilla? There is vanilla, okay. No, it says artificial vanilla flavoring. That's stupid. Literally, the ingredients for this vanilla cappuccino tea are apple, black tea, rose hips, candied pineapple, coffee beans, natural coffee flavoring with stevia extract, uh, an artificial cream and vanilla flavoring, which is not what I remember it having. But I've had the tea before and it tastes like vanilla cappuccino.
Wait, Christina, what did you just order? The fall faves thing? That's why I want to get it because there are teas in there that I haven't tried. And like, it's a sneak peek to when they eventually drop the tea. Yes. Okay, good. I'm definitely going to order that. Um, ew, pumpkin chai. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> uh, the vanilla one is good. Fruit teas are good. Yeah, so let me, like, run down the ingredients. This is such a riveting live stream. I'm talking about tea. Uh, so we already talked about strawberry rhubarb and vanilla cappuccino. Let's go back up to the top. Apple cider is good. They have another apple tea. I think it was, like, spiced apple chai or something. I made it iced a few weeks ago because I had some left over, and it was really good. Um... Apple cider has apple, apple pomace, which says in parentheses, apple pomace and citric acid, uh, sweet blackberry leaves, apple flavoring, uh, artificial apple flavoring, concentrated apple juice, and artificial vanilla and cream flavoring for cardamom French toast, which I've had before. Black tea, cinnamon, lemon peel, uh, coriander seeds, cardamom, sugar, natural and artificial vanilla and cardamom flavoring. It's funny because everything is spelled like the Canadian way, like flavoring, but I'm on the U.S. website, I think. Yeah, I'm on the U.S. website. Um, that would be a disaster if I wasn't because I already have a cart. In the cart, I don't think carries over from website to website. Like if you're Canadian and then switch over to US, I don't know. Uh, cranberry pear, cranberries, cane, uh, and then in parentheses it says cane sugar, cranberries, and sunflower oil. Uh, black tea, pear, apple, artificial cranberry flavoring, and natural pear flavoring. Forever nuts. Smells so good. I love it. I think I might still have some downstairs, actually. I'm going to do a stream one day where I just talk to you guys and drink tea. And I hope that you all join me and drink tea. Uh, apple, almonds, cinnamon, beetroot, artificial, sweet, roasted almond flavoring. Just beat it. Apple, raisins, hibiscus. Oh, another tea I'm not going to like. <laughs> Uh, it says hibiscus blossoms, uh, beetroot, elderberries, carrot, green mate, goji berries, aronia berries. I'm squinting to see this. Natural and artificial wild berry flavoring, uh, blackberries, red currants, guarana seeds, raspberries, and cornflower blossoms. Maple syrup oolong has uh, apple oolong tea candy. I need to increase my magnifier. Uh, apple oolong tea candy papaya. Uh, raisins, artificial maple and pancake flavoring, which is why it smells like pancakes. Buckwheat seeds, roasted chicory root, maple sugar, stevia extract, pumpkin chai, uh, black tea, cinnamon, cloves, caramel. Condensed skim milk, sugar, glucose. Okay, it's just listing the caramel ingredients. Uh, carrot, lemon peel, pumpkin candies. Like the candies that you get. No, I, I was. You know those candies that they sell? They taste like um, candy corn, but they're shaped like pumpkins. I was thinking of that, but obviously it's not that. Because why would it be? Uh, I know what they're talking about because the tea itself, I think, has little, like, pumpkin shapes in it, maybe. I could be just completely bullshitting all of you. But um, anyway, here it says pumpkin candies. Uh, and then, the, like, long parentheses explaining what that is. Pumpkin flakes, natural and artificial pumpkin spice flavoring. So basically, like, the pumpkin pie feeling flavoring, I'm assuming, because that's what they used to make the Starbucks drinks. Uh, allegedly, possibly. I could be wrong. I'm not a barista. Salted caramel oolong. Oolong tea. Caramel bits. Sugar. Uh, sugar crystals, rather. Pineapple. Carob. 
chicory root, artificial caramel flavoring, and salt. We already did strawberry rhubarb parfait and super ginger. We have organic ginger, organic green rooibos with a star next to it. I don't know why that is. Uh, organic black pepper, organic white pepper, organic pink peppercorn, natural flavoring with stevia extra. Why does everything have stevia in it? Isn't stevia bad for you? Sweet potato pie. Black tea, pecans, rock sugar. Ooh, rock sugar. Uh, cinnamon, butternut squash, sweet potato, marshmallows. Uh, it's explaining what that is. Like in the marshmallows. Ginger, nutmeg, allspice, natural flavoring, and then we have vanilla cappuccino. So, yeah, I think that the fall tea sampler thing looks like a 10 out of 10 for me. It has two five-star reviews from the review people. Let's see if anybody says anything. Yeah, one they, they both left reviews. One of them is long. I don't want to read them. Um, I'm squinting enough as it is because I'm blind. So, let's see. Let's see what's going on with chat. Well, what? Yeah. Stevia is supposed to be fine. Okay, I thought it was bad for some reason. Strawberry and cream tea is nice. I've heard that it's good. Wait, what's this Google link to, Ankar? Something about food? Oh, what is chai? Oh. If anybody's interested, Ankar posted a link in chat. Uh, for some reason, it came up as a Google search link. I don't care about whatever this is telling me, sharing the article. I don't want to share the article. I'm not watching this video. Um, it's about chai. It explains what it is. And this thing asking me to sign up is blocking half of the title. What is chai and how to make it? I can make chai? Huh. It's fascinating. I am not going to do that, but thank you for sharing. <laughs> you should do a live stream making tea. I will. I hope you have a really nice night, Gabby. Um, I know you're starting school again soon. I don't, I can't remember when, but I wish you the best of luck with that. I am going to walk away momentarily because I need a tissue. My nose has been running tonight for some reason, um, and it's really annoying. Have you heard of T2Ts? I haven't. What are they? I, I keep getting these ads on Facebook. They're like sponsored ads for some company um, called Tea Drops, and like they make these little um, like balls of tea that you put in the water and it dissolves into tea I guess from my understanding it looks kind of gimmicky but I mean some of the flavors that they have sound good there was also some other company that was like sad David's tea closed order from us instead and it's like the stores closed in the United States permanently but you can still like buy them online different flavors of teas all right I'm gonna google this this is now a tea stream and yes, one day I will do a live stream making tea. Uh, tonight is not that night. <laughs> tea 2. Teas. Oh, nice. They look like a good website. I am going... Oh, and it's bringing me to the U.S. website, too, which is great. Um, I'm assuming that they're international because I know you are in the U.K. Or England. Keep saying UK. Didn't England like secede from the UK? For latest updates on how T2 is responding COVID 19, I am good. Free shipping 
over $35. Heck yeah. David's T's free shipping cut off, I think, is 50 Who's texting me? Oh. Ankar, thank you for sending me the link to that how to make chai thing because honestly, I never would find it again if it was only in chat. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to post the link to this website in the chat for the tea if anybody wants to buy tea from there. Why is this such a long link? Okay. Um, it looks really good. I will definitely have to look into them a bit more. I feel like I missed messages. I did not. Okay. Strawberry and cream tea. Back to what you had said. That does sound really good. I know that David's tea has a berries and cream matcha. Question mark. I was looking at it earlier. This morning when I woke up, I was checking my email, and that's when they had said 20% off everything. And I was, like, browsing the website, but I hate their mobile site. And they were talking about how they were working on an app, but this was, like, quite a while ago, like, a few years ago. And there's no app, and it's 2020, and they're closing all their stores in the U.S. So, uh, let me look at their matcha. <sighs> I hope that they're going to be doing the um, advent calendars this year because I want my tea advent calendar. I don't see why they wouldn't be, but uh, if, you know, we get to October or November and there's no David's tea advent calendar released, then I'm going to be sad because Lush already made their Halloween and Christmas ranges like exponentially smaller than they usually are, which is fine by me. I don't know when Lush Halloween is. I think Lush Halloween is dropping in a couple of weeks, actually. I know it's coming out sooner in the UK, but I don't know um, about here. I can't remember. I don't keep up with that. I probably should because I had planned on getting, like, one thing from the Halloween range. <laughs> uh, let me see. We have yuzu matcha, peach matcha, raspberry, strawberry... Blueberry, vanilla, mojito. Honestly, like, for real, though, the peach matcha uh, is really good. And the blueberry. Actually, what am I talking about? I don't even know if I've had the peach. I've had the blueberry before, iced. It's delicious. Am I stupid? Is there no berries and cream matcha? Let me Google. Like, let me do the search bar for this. Because I swear I saw berries and cream. Did I miss it? It comes up as a search result. Uh, what's this? Raspberry cream pie. That's not it. Fruity refresh. What did I see this morning that was berries and cream? Was my mind just being stupid? I swear. Like, I saw berries and cream matcha, and now I'm not seeing it. Do I have that matcha sampler still in my cart? That's the real question. I don't. I have the fall tea one. Lavender honey matcha and the sunshine chai. There was a matcha sampler that I had in my... Uh, in a tab on my, like, phone chrome but I obviously closed that and didn't transfer it over to my computer with handoffs. So, there was a matcha sampler that I was looking at. There are a couple of them. Tea samplers. I just want the matcha one. I don't want the 50 million tea ones that you guys have. I cannot wait until they bring out all the fall stuff. Because it already felt like fall today. It was cold. I hated it. Actually, that's a lie. I kind of liked it. Um, but a lot of my winter stuff is packed because, like, it's been summer. We have a matcha single serves, which I think comes with the strawberry, blueberry, and peach matchas. They come in, like, little single serve pouch thingies, which is nice. Uh, and then we have, like, a different matcha single serves kit. But I think thought that there was a sampler that was different. Is this it? 
Okay, yeah. There's a matcha discovery sampler, and then there's another one. I just can't find it because I'm blind. Welcome to the stream. I can't see what I'm doing. I guess I'm just going to click on this matcha discovery. This is not it, though. There was, like, definitely one earlier that I saw this morning. Um, because I'm sure that this has the ones that I... Oh, wait, no, this is it! Yeah. I was wrong. There was another one that I saw earlier this morning that had, like, bubblegum-flavored matcha in it. And I was like, no, I want the other one. Uh, so this matcha sampler has blueberry matcha, matcha matsu, peach matcha, vanilla and yuzu and no strawberry for some reason and for whatever reason there's like no space between the words peach and matcha but for everything else there is so welcome to the stream i'm gonna buy like a billion dollars worth of tea tonight and by a billion i mean like about 50 because like david's tea is having a sale for another three hours Just had a delivery. I bought tea for one cup and teapot. I love matcha. I love matcha too. I don't think I ever make it properly. Um, which is a problem. Because I know that you have to whisk it with water. And I think that you have to do it in like, you know, the bowl thing. Like the low bowl. But I don't have that. Um, I just mix it. I am literally, okay, I, this is going to sound bad. Um, I just mix it with like a spoon and water and then I add milk. Or sometimes I'll just mix it with milk. You guys can all yell at me for making matcha wrong because I'm, I know I'm doing it wrong. But it still tastes good. Who's calling me? I can call you back in like 20 minutes. So, uh, I have a bowl and a shaving whisk. I used to have a matcha whisk. I don't know what the heck happened to it. I have a cabinet in our kitchen next to the stove that has, like, all of the tea and stuff in it that I have. And the matcha whisk used to be in that cabinet, but it's no longer in there. David's Tea has a matcha essentials kit. It comes with matcha as well as the whisk and the bowl and the little, like, pestle thing. Not pestle little like wooden thing to kind of like stomp out on the clumps um but i read the reviews and everybody said that it was like bad quality and the bowl was too small so i'm just gonna get something on amazon which fun segue and i probably should have mentioned this earlier in chat but i signed up to be an amazon associate today it was free uh, and that means that in the description of all of my videos there are affiliate links to products on amazon uh, like my camera bundle and this ring light that I'm using. And I'm still having trouble finding a working link for my mic because I know everybody likes this mic and asks me what I use. And it's a Samson Q2U, the number two, Q, the number two, U. And I cannot find it for the life of me, like a reliable link from Amazon because they're selling out all the time because everybody is deciding to do podcasts or needs them for Zoom calls in this new world that we live in. Uh, so anyway, I'm probably just going to get the matcha thing on Amazon. That teapot sounds really nice. Um, I have a teapot, actually. It's a little mini one, and it has an infuser in it. In the top, like the infuser basket. So you can just fill it with like the hot water and like put the tea in the infuser basket in the top and close the lid and like you can just infuse like an entire teapot of tea. I should really like make tea on stream. I that was a good suggestion on car. Thank you. I'm going to do that at some point. Obviously not tonight. However, I probably will go downstairs and make myself a cup of tea after stream. Uh, so I'm looking at this and I think that I'm just going to get separate matcha bags or like the single serves one but I, in reality 
Uh, I'm going to drink more than a single serve of matcha. So I am going to get like two. Ounce. Well, wait, how much is in a single serve little thing? Because if it's about the same as like a two ounce bag of tea. Can I not go back? Oh, I'm in the wrong tab. <laughs> Uh, if it's about the same as a single, as a uh, two ounce pouch of tea, then like I will just get the single serves if I can find. Here it is. All right. Are you going to tell me how much is in here or are you just going to be stupid? Um, oh, goodness. Excuse the yawn. Uh, it just has the English and French names on it. That's not helpful. Does it say anywhere, like, well, it's less than the sampler kit. Oh. Oh, it just says 12 pre-measured. Wait a minute. Shake up hot or iced matcha refreshment on the go with 12 pre-measured portions of these sweetened, finely ground green teas, fresh blueberry matcha, mouth-watering peach matcha, and juicy strawberry matcha. Uh, each little packet contains just the right amount of matcha for an 8-ounce tea. So, yeah, yeah I'm just going to do this. Um, it says 120 grams, so it's 4.2 ounces. So, what's that divided by 3? Let me open up a calculator because I'm dumb. Uh... 120 divided by 3. 40 grams. And an ounce of tea is 50 grams. So we have about 40 grams of tea or matcha, whatever, per thing, roughly. At 1440 total versus me getting two ounces of each tea for like one and a half times the price of this. Hmm. I all I've had the blueberry one. I loved it. I don't think I've ever had the peach or strawberry, but I've really wanted to try it. I still cannot believe that I'm going for as long as I am with this stream. Uh, let me see. Uh, b -b -b have you tried saffron? No, I haven't. Um, I vaguely know what it is. It's like a spice, right? No? Yes? I ask you guys questions because then I don't have to Google them. And I've done like 50 Google searches during this stream. Um, however, Ankar had shared a dessert with me when i say shared a dessert like he sent me a link or he sent me photos of a dessert um that had saffron in it uh as well as other things and it looked very good it was called modak and they reminded me of bao in the term of the shape uh, it was shaped like a little dumpling and uh the insides of them have coconut and brown sugar and saffron and i think a few other things Ankar, if you're still here in chat please correct me um but saffron is a spice. Okay, so I'm not completely dumb. So this tea, this matcha sampler, I cannot believe there are four of you still watching this. <laughs> uh, God. Yeah, I'm just going to do it. Add to cart. Thank you. Uh, now, I have a wish list, evidently. Am I not signed in? I signed in earlier. You didn't lock me out. Remember me. Sign in. I swear, I signed in. And I hit the, yes, I want 2% cash back thing. Where is my wish list? And is there still stuff on it? Wish list. Uh, is it empty? Question mark. 
Um, no, it's not. Oh, <laughs> I have the lavender and honey matcha on my wish list. Well, that's great because that's in the cart. So we're going to remove it from the wish list. Uh, and I think that that was it. No. I had Okay, well, uh, everything that I have on my wish list apparently is in my cart right now. So we're good. Except for this one thing. Lychee peach tea. I think I'm not in the mood for that. I have a um a cold cup. Oh my god, did I just add like 50,000 different types of matcha to my wish list one day? Did I just come to the website and be like, I want all the matcha and now I don't care? Uh, because I think that's what happened. Anyway, there's this cold cup. It's like a cold tumbler. It says that it is... Well, it doesn't say the... Um, dimensions of it. How much can it hold? Is it 32 ounces? Hello? It just says two-tone teal holographic favorite tumbler and it has five stars. Uh, are you going to tell me the dimensions of this thing? It's double walled. It's BPA free. Hold up to 20, keep it cold up to 24 hours. Oh, duh. Product specifications. 20 ounce capacity. That's not bad. Add to cart. Listen, I'm treating myself. We're in quarantine. Remove from wish list. I hate that, like, the tab for this says site-us site. It's like, be more specific. What is this? There is a berries and cream matcha. It says this product is currently unavailable. Please remove it from your list. Thanks. Appreciate it. Bye. All right. One forty-five a.m. for you. Yeah, I think I'm going to go. It's late for you. Uh, it's almost nine o'clock for me. I've been live for almost two hours. I meant to be live for an hour, for a single hour, but, uh, here we are. And I will see you next time, next week, probably with a, another fun show. Uh, I'm going to go buy tea and call back this person who just called me because I feel bad that I did not answer them and I would like to catch up with them. And then I'm going to go to bed. So uh, it's been a long day and I packed and it was stupid and stressful. So uh, I appreciate everybody for coming and staying as long as you did. I'm very grateful for that because this turned into a much longer stream than I had anticipated. Good night. Take care. Good night to you as well. I hope you have a wonderful evening and don't stay up too late. I am probably not going to stay up too late. But uh, I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Thank you for coming.